Ah, okay. A typical helium neon laser found in the supermarket checkout scanners emits 633 nanometer wavelength light um, in a 1.3 millimeter diameter beam with the power of 1.1 milliwatts. Okay, so it's a lot of information to take in. Some of it is just descriptive. The 633 nanometers, that's the wavelength. We haven't really done anything with wavelengths other than to say it's the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. This just describes the laser that they're talking about. So it's a laser beam that goes like this. It's different than the cell phone tower or the light bulb where it's going in all different directions. A laser beam just goes like this. It's going through an area that's a circle basically, right? So if you shoot a laser that way, not going to be this big, but it's the uh, area that you're going through is just the area of the circle instead of the area of a sphere. So if you shoot a laser straight up, it doesn't spread out in all different directions, it stays together. Okay, so we know the, uh, the diameter of the beam, and we know the power. And we want to figure out how much is the electric field part, and I think part B is the, probably the magne uh, magnetic field part. Yeah, so if we can get the electric field part, the magnetic field part is just take the electric field part, divide by the speed of light. So it's similar to what we've done. The difference is we've got to calculate the intensity. So let me get the intensity, and then I'll leave it to you to get the electric field part, because it's the same as we just did on those previous two problems. Okay, so let's get the intensity. Okay, good. Same thing, power per area. So the power is given, it's just, it's a laser beam, so this is the kind of area that we have to look at. It's not going in all different directions, so it's not uh, 4 pi r squared, it's just the area of a circle, pi r squared. Okay, so for this problem, and you might have different numbers, so be careful. The power is given in the problem, in mine it's 1.1 to the minus third watts, and then the surface area is going to be pi times r squared. So my problem had 1.3 millimeter diameter. You might have a different number. So I'm just going to get the radius. So half of that, 0.65 I think. And then that's what I'll have to use for the, for the radius. So the, all the power is going over this smaller area. So 0.65, half the diameter. And then don't forget to square it. And then that'll give you the intensity. And then once you get the intensity, it's uh, similar to what we did before to get the electric field part. Okay, so, so get the intensity, and then from that you can get the electric field, just like we did on the previous couple of problems. And then you can get the magnetic field part, just like we did on the previous couple of problems as well. All right, any questions on that one? Stuff is pretty intense, but we're doing okay, I think. Okay. You know, because we're talking about intensity. If you're watching the video, everybody in the room is laughing, you just can't hear it. <laughs> okay. So um, this will lead right into my, eye my uh, sunglasses story. Polarizers and changing polarization. We can transform unpolarized light. So this is unpolarized light, like from the sun or an incandescent bulb. Uh, the electric field is in all different directions. We can send it through uh, something called a polarizer. So a typical polarizing filter is a plastic sheet that contains long organic molecules called polymers. So here's, the, here's some chains of polymers. Whatever part of the electric field hits this polymer, um, the, the atoms will oscillate along these chains and kill off that part of this unpolarized wave. And then what actually comes through this way, it's just polarized in this direction. So you take this that has all different directions, you send it through this, and you get out something that's just polarized in this direction. 
And then you can send it through another polarizer and change the direction again. Okay. Good, so uh, this light has all different directions, like from the sun or an incandescent bulb. Goes through this, this part is killed off, and what, what le what's left is what comes through there. That's the uh, polarizer axis. Only the component of the light polarized perpendicular to the polarizer emerges. Okay, so that goes right through like this. At some level, this stuff seems like magic, right? Like, that doesn't really happen. You can't see it happening. There's really chains of molecules. So it turns out these, uh, these sunglasses I got from Menards, um, I've had them for a while. They haven't broken yet, but they're not really very expensive. I was looking at my uh, cell phone. I was actually at the beach, and uh, I was going to take a picture. So I'm looking at it, and it's fine. And then every time I turn it to the side, the screen goes almost black. It's like a really dark blue, almost black. And I thought, oh, I changed the setting on my phone. So I contacted the kid. How do, what do, I, how do I fix it? He didn't know. He never heard of that before. It turns out if I turn it to the side without my glasses on, it's completely fine. So uh, I have polarized light coming off my cell phone that's polarized uh, this way. I can see it fine. I can see it fine like this, too. My eyes work work fine when I put my sunglasses on looks great turn it this way the screens black I couldn't take any pictures so the, the light here is polarized it's going to my glasses which don't let anything in like this so none of this light is getting to me the reason uh, sunglasses are polarized like that if you're driving in your car light comes off the the road it's the road makes it polarized like this and you don't want that glare from the road so your light blocks off, your, your uh, glasses block off light reflecting from the road. That would hit you in the eyes here. But they forgot about cell phones. So if you ever turn your cell phone sideways with your sunglasses on and you can't see anything, your cell phone might be polarized like this and then your glasses are killing off that part. Okay, I discovered that by Googling it. Like somebody said, you're not wearing sunglasses, are you? Like, ah, oh, it's polarized as soon as I read that. Okay. So uh, there's chains of uh, polymers in my, these little Menards glasses that are actually completely functional. It's a way to test it, right? If you, if you buy sunglasses, they say polarized. You're like, oh, okay, I'll just, you gotta take the word for it, right? It says polarized, but maybe your phone actually does the same thing as mine. You can actually check it out. I got a pair from Ace Hardware that were only two ninety nine, and they're not polarized at all. So, okay, back to this. Any questions on my my story there? Okay, good. So if you take polarized light and you send it through a filter, so this is already polarized. You send polarized light, so maybe it was unpolarized. They went through one filter. Now you got another filter over here. Uh, we're looking at what happens to polarized light once it goes through another filter. This is the, uh, the transmitted intensity. You need this for one of the homework questions. So uh, the cosine of 90 turns out to be uh, um, zero. So you don't get anything through when they're perpendicular to each other. So if light is this way and your, the filter is like this, like my sunglasses, the intensity that's transmitted is zero. And I really can't see anything on my phone. It looks really dark blue. Okay, so again, you'll need that for, I think, the second to last homework question, this formula. And it really goes down to this idea. Here's polarized light going through a polarizer. What actually comes out? Here's the uh, polarizer axis. Here's the way it's polarized. The only part that's gonna make it through is this part. Okay. And that turns out to be the, the cosine um, part of it. Okay, so when you do 1237, um, you'll have to use this to figure out the angle that you need to cut the intensity down. Okay, so I'll leave that one to you because we're, we're out of time. Actually, we got a one minute. Okay, let's look at it real quick. Uh, 
break the formula down real fast. Okay, so in this one, um, only 31% of the intensity of polarized light wave uh, passes through a polarizing filter. All right, so it's already polarized, it hits another filter. Only 31% of the intensity is, uh, passes through the filter. What is the angle between the electric field and the axis of the filter? So they're asking for what is theta in that formula. So um, they don't really tell you how much you started with or how much you end with, they just tell you that you only have 31% left. So how do you set something like that up? And you might have different numbers on yours, by the way. Okay. So they're, what they're telling you is, if you take 0.31, multiply it by the incident light, that will give you the transmitted light. Okay, so this is perfectly good, this formula. This is the piece of information that we'll have to put into the formula. So I guess the way to do it would be, uh, let's take this and plug it in here. Okay, so that's 0.31 I incident is equal to I incident cosine squared of theta. And then the I incidents actually cancel out. Right, because they're on one on both sides. And then the only thing that you don't know is uh, what you're looking for. So I'll have to take the square root of both sides. It's 0.31 because that's 31%. So that's the cosine of theta. And you'll have to take then the inverse cosine of the square root of 0.31 to recover theta then. Okay, good. Excellent. Just be careful, you might have different numbers than I have. All right, any questions on, on that one? All right, so that's it for today. Um, if your name is the beginning of the alphabet, I'll see you tomorrow. Again, I'll be there at 5, so if you want to come in at 5, that's fine. If you can't come till 7, that's fine as well. And then uh, no, cl no, we won't meet on Wednesday. I'll make a video and we'll start doing uh, chapter uh, 18, I believe the uh, geometric optics chapter. Questions? All right, good. Got one third of the class left to go. I think we're in pretty good shape.